you know, those of you who, who have seen me present before have followed me in any way know that I, I'm really not uh, one to, to, uh, uh, to want to be in a trade around earning season. With all the strategies that I teach my students, I, I usually tell them to get out of the trade before that, that uh, earnings news release. And there's very specific reasons for it. But today I'm going to share with you three different um, uh, strategies that you can use uh, around uh, earnings season. So, uh, and they all involve options. Uh, so, very small risk and some decent uh, reward. So, let me share that with you here today. So, for those of you joining us for the first time, a bit about us here at Trading Wins. We are a group of pro traders with well over 30 years of experience. We're real traders and real teachers, and we've been developing our own strategies and trading systems for many years and teaching people from complete beginners to experts around the globe. Now, today I'm going to show you the right way to trade earnings. Our first strategy uh, is uh, what you want to do ahead of earnings. Okay, This involves getting in about two weeks or so, a week and a half, two weeks, even three weeks before that earnings release. I'm going to show you how to put implied volatility, uh, how to work to your advantage, Okay, where it usually works against you. And I'll explain that in a moment. Now, second strategy, I'm going to show you a, a simple option strategy that most people would, would you know, interpret it as a more advanced strategy, but I'll show you a simple way to put this on that puts that reward to risk ratio well in your favor. And this one you're going to put on uh, the day, if, if not the day before earnings. Okay, but right around that earnings announcement, you're going to be in and out of that trade uh, very quickly, and the third one, which is my favorite, I'm leaving my my uh, the best for last here. Uh, I'm going to show you how to take advantage of the explosive move that sometimes happens after earnings. I'll show you how to recognize it, when to get in, and exactly when to exit um, those moves. Okay, and then of course, time permitting, I'll do my best to answer as many of your questions as possible. <clears throat> now please remember that trading can be extremely risky if you don't know what you're doing, so please educate yourself first. Do not trade with real money until you are completely comfortable with this strategy and the systems that you are using. Okay, so let's get right into this. Let's not waste any time using implied volatility to your advantage. I'm going to bring in up my, uh, my, my charting platform here and share something with you, <clears throat> okay? So typically when we, people trade earnings, they think of or, or they look for a stock that they expect will make a big gap one way or the other after that earnings announcement. And typically what they're doing is trying to guess the direction, okay? Trying to figure out, you know, for example, Netflix. Is Netflix releases earnings tomorrow? Which way is it going to go? So they, they look at how well they've been doing fundamentally and, and, and many other things, and, and then they try to guess that, that gap. Well, what happens is, and the problem with that, especially by buying uh, a call option, for example, the day of. So if Netflix reports after it close, and uh, just before close, you purchase a call option, an out-of-the-money call expecting a big gap, even if that gap is in your favor, chances are you will lose money. And that's because of the implied volatility. So if you're a Thinkorswim user, one thing you can do here is go to your option chains and collapse them all and look to your right. And, and these numbers here, these are the implied volatility numbers. Now, when you collapse your option chains, what you're going to find is that most of these numbers, most of these months, expiring months, happen to have an implied volatility very similar to one another. Okay, so th this one on average is, is about the mid 20s. Okay, that's your average. But you'll see here, and this is lows, by the way, L O W. You'll see here that the this week's expiration, this month's August, which expires this week, is actually closer to 50%, okay? And that is because they have an earnings announcement coming out in the next day or two, okay? So what you will find is that leading into earnings, uh, there's pent-up demand 
for, for that move or that expected gap. And what happens is you'll see a, a, a spike in the option premiums, okay, in that implied volatility. Now, Lowe's doesn't move very much. It moves about 3 or $4 on an earnings announcement. So you're not going to get a, a huge spike in implied volatility, but something like Netflix, Tesla, for example, the Googles, Amazons of the world, Starbucks, Facebook, for example, you're going to see much larger spike in implied volatility. Many times you will see this number go over 100%. Okay, and so what happens is as soon as that earnings announcement is released, this number falls right back in line with the average. So now imagine for a second that this number were to be at 100%. After the market close, they release earnings, and regardless of what the announcement was, whether there's a big gap higher, big, back, uh, big gap lower, you know, whether they miss or they hit expectations, this number, come tomorrow morning when, when the market opens, is going to fall right back in line here. So from 100 down to 25, that means that that option that you purchased is going to lose 75% of its value instantly. Okay, regardless of whether it capped in your favor or not. And that's why many people can't understand why they're losing money, even though they guess the direction correctly. So the real key here is to take advantage of that spike in volatility. So what you want to actually do is you, you want to identify that earnings date. And two to three weeks beforehand, you want to watch that, that chart and you want to look for a proper buy or sell signal, okay? Now, uh, my students in, in know we use several different strategies, but it, it doesn't have to be ours. It could be any strategy that you're using that identifies a buy or a sell uh, at that time, two or three weeks ahead of time. Now, that spike in volatility, okay, is going to inflate options premium from that point into that earnings announcement. And that's what you want, because you can use it a couple of different ways. Number one, if you bought a call, for example, and the stock actually does move higher between the day you buy it and leading into that earnings announcement, not only is your call going to appreciate in value because of the, the gain in the stock, but it will also appreciate because of the spike in implied volatility. And it can also, really protect you because should your stock remain flat, okay, or even, <clears throat> excuse me, slightly lower into that earnings announcement, you're still going to get a spike in implied volatility because of that pent up uh, expectation for that earnings announcement. So that will actually, uh, it, you could end up even making money even if you guess the direction wrong or at least take a much smaller loss, okay, so that is really um, what you want to be doing. You want to be buying two or three weeks before and you want to exit that trade a day before or or the day of earnings before that earnings are, is released because that gap can happen either way. Okay, It's impossible to guess the direction. Uh, you can look back at the previous announcements and see you know if, if it's moved higher three out of the four uh, previous announcements, then chances are it's going higher. But really, in the end, all you're doing is guessing, and that's exactly what you don't want to do when you're trading is guessing. So you want to use that implied volatility spike in your favor by buying early here or selling, depending on your on your uh, signal on the chart, and then getting out of that earnings uh, play just before those earnings are actually released, okay? So <clears throat> here's another one, Staples, which has earnings coming up. See, uh, Thinkorswim actually plots it on your chart. There it is on the 19th. They're expected out. And if we go to the chain, again, this is by no means a big mover. We're actually not in earnings season right now, but keep an eye on this when we do get into earnings season. You'll see uh, just how high these numbers go. But you can see the average here. It's high 30s, low 40s, and yet this week's is, is already at 63%. So as soon as that earnings is released, that number is going to fall back in line here with, with the, the average. And so your option is actually going to lose um, 
uh, that amount of percentage uh, um, right after the earnings uh, are announced. So that's why you want to be out of the trade before that, okay? Now, another uh, need strategy that, that you can use, uh, let me share it with you here. And it's, there's a way to put a, a or give yourself a 10 to 1 reward to risk trade setup, but it's not so much the the amount of money that you can make here. But what I really like about this is just how little you are actually risking, okay? A very, very small amount. So let me explain this to you. Now, even if you don't know, uh, aren't, aren't very familiar with options, um, and, and you know, aren't used to trading them, you can do this fairly simply and by the end of the session, I'll, I'll explain exactly how uh, we can help you with that. Now, the other thing you can do here to put the reward to risk ratio extremely in your favor here is by using support and resistance, okay? The expected or the average move that a stock tends to make upon uh, or in, in its previous earnings. And you do so by using an option strategy known as a butterfly spread, okay? And butterfly spreads you can put on for a very, very small amount, okay? It costs you a very small amount, pennies on the dollar, but they can actually um, uh, turn into uh, some pretty significant profits. So if we look at Caterpillar here, now, Caterpillar just released earnings uh, recently, so they won't have an announcement for a while. But I want to use this as an example. If uh, they had earnings coming up recently, or, or very soon, what you want to do is identify um, areas, very strong areas of support and resistance that this stock might gap into, okay? Because what typically happens, uh, after an earnings announcement is you'll get a gap one way or the other, but that stock over the next couple of days will run right into an area of, of uh, significant support or resistance, okay? So if we look at this, and I'll zoom in in a moment here for those of you working on a, a smaller screen, but just let's, let's take some very obvious levels here of support and resistance, okay? So... Here we have, and, and you can take these previous highs and lows here. So we have one here right around that 81 and a half, 82 level, okay? And we have one down here, the most recent low, right around that 75 level, okay? So if we look back and, and we measure the amount uh, that this stock typically gaps, okay, you, you'll often find that that amount, that distance, uh, there's usually a, an area of support and resistance right within range, okay? So here we are right around that $78 mark, and this is about $4, uh, $4 away, okay, on either end, okay? So what you can do here to take advantage of this. Now, again, we're not trying to guess the direction. That's the wrong thing to do. We have no idea. It's, it's a complete gamble which way this is going to gap. But what you can do is put a butterfly spread at either end. Now, butterfly spread is a combination of a debit spread with a credit spread that overlap, the short strikes overlap. But let me show you here. Let's go to our, our, our option chain. And I'm, I'm going to um, plot this on the Analyze tab, but let's take those levels, the 82 and the 74 here. Uh, assuming that earnings were, were coming out this week, okay, we're going to use the most recent expiration here, because that's when you would be putting this on. You'd be putting it on the day before or the day of. There's no need to buy uh, or put on a butterfly spread earlier than that, because butterfly spreads do not appreciate in value unless and until you're very close to expiration, okay? So let's look at that 75 level right here, and let's buy a butterfly, okay? And you can see here it's a 15-cent debit. Now, I'm, we can actually widen out these, uh, let me just widen out these strikes here. Let's go a full dollar wide here. So our mid-strike, 
is 75, okay? That'll cost us 14 cents, okay? Now, I have this set as default of uh, 10 contracts, but it can be anything, but I want to show you on the Analyze tab what this is going to look like, okay? So let's look at this. What this means is, you see this, this uh, tent here? Okay, this vertical line here, this is the lower break-even mark, and over here is your higher break-even mark. So basically, from around 74.14 to uh, 75.86 or so, anywhere in between there, if the stock ends up anywhere in between there on expiration, you will make money. So anywhere underneath this tent, you will make money. Now let's look at the risk versus reward. But anything below this 74.14 will turn into a loss for us, but it flattens out at the amount that we actually paid for the spread. The nice thing about butterfly spreads is you will never pay, um, you will never lose any more than what you paid for. Same thing if the stock closes above that 75.86 mark, you're still gonna lose what you paid for it. Okay, but even with 10 contracts, that's $140. You can see that number here, okay? $140 of risk if it closes below 74.16 or above 75.86, but anywhere in between. And if it, the closer it closes to 75, the more your profit. So we max out here at just over $800, $822, okay? So you're risking 140 to make 800 on that trade. But here's the thing, because we can go back and now plot one on, on the opposite end at 82, okay? So we did that one at 75. We can now go in and, sorry, let me go back to the Analyze tab here and put one on at the 85 strike level. Okay, right here, okay, <clears throat> or in and around there. I mean, uh, there isn't much there right now, but there would be if this was a true earnings because, again, the prices would be inflated, although what you're going to find is that uh, the prices of the butterflies won't be <laughs> much higher. Now, you see this is at zero. It'll typically be around a nickel or a dime, okay, but again, you'll have the same risk to reward ratio. You're risking 50 to $100 to make that, that potential uh, 800 or so on that trade. So now by spending, by spending roughly 200 here, you got both ends covered, okay? Both ends covered. And again, you can do this by either measuring the amount a stock typically moves on a gap, they're, they're fairly uh, predictable. If you go back and look at Netflix, for example, it's right around $10 on most earnings announcements, okay, that it gaps. And, and so you can put a butterfly, you know, $10 wide on either end, or, and especially if that number lines up with a strong area of support and resistance, that is, is very, very key, okay? A lot of times, you'll see these stocks move on earnings, and then within two, three days, they're right back to an area of support and resistance, okay? That's, that's uh, what you wanna do. So very inexpensive way of giving yourself uh, a way to make a significant profit off that move. Now, that's probably the least favorite of, of mine. I really love buying ahead of earnings and taking advantage of that implied volatility spike. But let me share with you another one here that, that is my favorite, and that's the explosive move that happens after um, earnings are released, okay? So let's have a look at a few stocks here. But what I want to do first off is bring in a different indicator on my chart here, okay? Now, this is an indicator that's widely available on most charting platforms, so you do not need to think or swim for this. Just about any charting platform will do, and it is called and known as the Keltner Channels, okay? I'm gonna add that study, and I'm gonna remove the other moving average I had on there. So I'm just 
I'm going to plot the Keltner channels and I'm using the default settings. Okay, I'm not changing anything, just the default Keltner channel settings. So this is what it's going to look like. Now the rules for entry and exit are very, very basic. Okay, In 30 seconds, you'll have the whole strategy here. So you identify that earnings date and you wait for that earnings release. Okay, So if this stock reported last night, for example, we'd wait for the opening today and it would be this gap bar right here. This would be the gap. Okay, we'd let this day go by, we just sit back and watch and wait. Now, the following day, the following day, we want to wait for a move above the high of this bar. Okay, that's what we want. Let me draw this in using a different tool so you can see it clear. Okay, what we want is this. First of all, rule number one, that gap must take the price of that stock outside the Keltner channels. Now it could be above or below, but you can see that before earnings, uh, it was within, it gapped outside, okay? Once it gapped outside, you wait for a break of that high, and then you stay in that trade until it closes back below the upper Keltner channel, okay? Now, same thing to the downside. If it gaps, in this case it didn't, okay? Same with here, so you, you, there'd be nothing to do. But if it gapped below, you'd wait for a trade below the low, okay? And then you'd exit on any close above the lower end of that count in the channel. Let me show you some clear examples here. Let's go to MDLZ here, okay? So here, now this stock, was already above the Keltner channels before earnings. And that's usually a heads up of the direction, okay? But it's not a strong enough indicator for me to tell you to use that as a strategy in itself, okay? But just so you know, more often than not, it tends to happen. Now, you see here, here's the gap bar. This was the gap, okay? It closed the very next day, we trade above that high. Okay, that means we've got a runaway gap on our hands. And we just sit in it, we, we, you can buy a call. I mean, you can buy the, the stock as well, but why, why risk all that money? You can buy an inexpensive call option. If you have a smaller account, a great place to put on a debit spread or a vertical spread. Or, even better, is to sell a call a put credit spread, excuse me, sell a put credit spread here as well. And I'll talk about those strategies in a, in a bit more in a minute. But once it closes above that high, sorry, trades above that high, you go along and you wait and you stay in there until it closes below that top end of the counter uh, channel, okay? Not a trade below, but a close below, okay? You can see here as well on this earnings announcement, here it was within the counter bars. It gapped outside the very next day. It trades uh, above the high. We go along and we stay in this until it closes below. You see here it had actually dipped below that count number. We stay in until it closes below, okay? This way what you will find is that um, the majority of the trades will work in your favor when they don't losses are fairly tight um, uh, anyway, because that, that gap bar is, is usually not that far away from that top Keltner channel. Here's another one here, okay? It gapped high, there's the gap bar. It trades above the high, okay? And it takes off. Now we're technically still in this trade. It has not closed below. Although when you, when, you know, when you see a big move like that, you, there's nothing stopping you from scaling out of these positions and taking part of your profit and moving your stop up, okay? There's many ways to play this. Um, but that is the, the basic strategy. Let's look at a few more examples here. And the reason why I really love options is, is really for the protection and the fact that you're taking a very minimal amount of risk on each trade. And you can get into a position very inexpensively, and that's all you're risking is what you're paid 
for that option. Here's a gap back in October on TSCO, okay, from within the counter channels to outside. Now, it doesn't matter how big that gap was. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how wide range that bar is on earnings day, on that day following the earnings announcement, okay? What matters is that the following day, we get that move above, okay? It doesn't have to be a close above, just a move above. We're in there up until we get a close below that Keltner channel, which here happens to be here, okay? Sometimes, you know, they're two, three dollar moves. Sometimes they can be enormous. There's There's been uh, a few on Netflix and, and Tesla, et cetera, that, that have just been uh, amazing. Now, when you get that gap, okay, and you don't get that full bar outside the counter channel, you do not want to take that trade, okay? So when it gaps and it's, uh, if even part of that bar is within the counter channels, you do not want to take that trade, okay? And whether it's up or down, it really doesn't matter. Let's look at Amazon. And the other thing I wanted to mention is the three strategies that I'm showing you today, you can actually put on all three around the one earnings announcement. So in other words, if you had a signal to get in on Amazon, you can get in two, three weeks before with an option and take advantage of that implied volatility spike in earnings. You can exit that trade the day before and put on butterfly spreads around those significant areas of support and resistance or that measured move um, that um, you calculated based on the average move in previous earnings announcements. And then after that, you can, um, uh, once it has gapped, if it, it gaps outside of that Keltner channel like this, and you get a trade above the high for a long trade, you can, once again, either buy a call option, debit spread, sell a put credit spread, and stay in that trade up until you get that close back below that top bar here of the counter channels. Now, you see here on this earnings announcement in April, uh, it gapped significantly higher, but it did not trade above the high, okay? It traded below the low. That's the wrong direction. We do not take that trade, okay? so. We ignore that one. This one here, again, uh, there was a huge gap, okay? Now, it it, it, uh, it opened all the way up here in the exact same day. It actually uh, dropped significantly and traded below the low. So again, in the wrong direction. On a gap up, you want to see a trade above the high to get in. And on a gap lower, you want to see a trade below the low, all right? Here's another one on Charter. This is a very simple, basic strategy. You know, a couple of rules. That's it. Very easy to spot. And on earnings season, during earnings season, there's several companies releasing earnings every single day. You can use a site like uh, earningswhispers.com or if you have Thinkorswim or any other platform that marks the earnings dates on your chart for you, uh, just wait for after earnings are released, okay? If it has gapped outside and has broken that high, then um, you uh, you just stay in that trade until you get that close below. Let me see if I can find you uh, another example here. Cisco. So here's Cisco gaps and closes, uh, was already above the Keltner bars, is remains there after that gap trades immediately above that high and just goes on a run okay these are the beauties these are year makers okay now whether you sold a put credit spread whether you bought a debit spread whether you bought a call okay you've done very well here wait this would have been your exit bar here you wait for that close below okay and you get out at the open the next day all right so those are the three strategies, and um, I'm sure you have, uh, well, I can see that there are many questions, and I'll try to get through as many as I can. Um, before I do that, though, I just want to let you know about 
a pro class we have coming up. Uh, it's actually a, a class we did in the past. We have an on-demand recording of this class. It's called Crush the Market with Options. And during this class, I, I teach you a uh, way to use weekly credit spreads, okay, to earn a steady income with options. Also, those butterflies, you know, whether you're risking 50 to make 500, whether you're risking 90 to make 900 to 1,000, I'll show you the right way to do this, and not just around earnings, but in all other situations, along with the strategies that, that we employ. Um, also, delta neutral strategies, so that regardless of the market conditions, whether the market's gone flat, and, and consolidating sideways or not, you'll have a couple of different strategies that you can use during those flat periods in the market to pull uh, credit out, out of the market and, and uh, make that steady income. And one of the most important features of this class is on how to repair trades that go wrong. Because with options, I already mentioned, I love the fact that you can trade them with such small amount of risk. On top of that, when you can use repair strategies for the trades that don't go wrong, it's an even bigger bonus. So the link for this class is tradingwinds.com forward slash crush. But before you sign up, let me tell you exactly what you're going to get with this so that you know that it's right for you. Now, as soon as you sign up, you're going to get the on-demand recording of this pro class that is yours for, for life. Access it from anywhere. You have an internet connection. You have it available to you immediately. Uh, and as a bonus, because each one of the classes that we run is slightly different, um, the Q&A is different, more material comes up, and as we answer those questions, we cover different parts of technical analysis. So with that, as a bonus, we throw in a second recording of the most recent pro class we did on July 17th of this year. And as a real bonus, this is one of the best parts, a 30-day membership to our pro service. So let me tell you a bit about that. Our pro um, membership service is the best way to get access to all of our trading strategies, especially for that first earning strategy that I showed you when you're looking for that setup two to three weeks before the earnings. Uh, we have a couple of very simple but extremely effective strategies that we use, and uh, you'll see me highlighting those in the, the nightly videos, which is the second part to this membership. Every Sunday to Thursday evening, you'll receive a video, a market recap video, which is the best way to learn how we trade and employ the strategies that we do. We also hold live market chats every Thursday morning from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern. And they're recorded. Even if you can't make that time, they're recorded. Uh, they're great sessions. You can come into our room, ask me any trading-related question you like. They're fantastic sessions. And you also will get access to trade alerts, entries, exits, profit targets on all the trades that we take. As well, you'll have access to our library of past educational material, all of that free for 30 days. So all of this together is a value of $691, but as always, we're proud. We're very, very proud of what we do here at Trading Wins, and we really want to give you a chance to experience it yourself because we know you're going to love it. We're only asking for $49, okay? Tradingwins.com, or sorry, $47. I, I'm on no sleep here, <laughs> sorry. Tradingwins.com forward slash crush is the link. It's available to the first 50 people. Again, this is everything you get. Now, I believe I still have a few more minutes here. And with the wonders of technology, I'm going to try to bring in our um, coaching coordinator, Raul, if he's a, he should be in our offices in California, if he's online, and can come in and help me read off some questions so we can get through as many as we can in the few minutes we have left. I'd love to answer uh, any more any questions. Raul, are you there? Vince, can you hear me? Yes, I can. How are you doing in Peru? I miss you already. Good. <laughs> well, I'm doing great. I'm really looking forward to my week here. Um, just on no sleep at all. So uh, after this, I'll get some sleep and then enjoy my week. I know. You know what you put together was a fantastic offer, but you you wanted to charge people two dollars more than what you I know. Promised, so <laughs> just glad you corrected that. Listen, I've got a lot of questions here from yes. a lot of the folks. I hope you've got a few minutes to go through it. 
Um, one of the folks was asking, are straddles and strangles good strategies for uh, earnings season? Uh, no, I absolutely do not like them at, at all. I much prefer uh, the butterfly spreads. The straddles and strangles are very difficult or very challenging because that implied volatility uh, spike works um, uh, against you. Um, you know, if you put them on the two weeks before, two, three weeks before, um, they can work in your favor. The problem is you need as an expected move uh, for those to make money one way or the other. Um, if you're the, the same launch is just much easier. But uh, I actually will explain a lot more about that during this class. Uh, Rita was asking, will this class be included as part of the package as well? She missed a little bit of the first part of this session. You know what? Yes, for anyone who orders uh, our Crush the Market with Options class, we will make sure to send you the recording of this class as well so you can go through it at your leisure. And remember, during your 30 days of membership, uh, you will also receive four uh, recordings, the, the four live market chats that we have every Thursday morning. Okay. I know you had gone into detail about what you get with a membership. Uh, just for full disclosure, what happens at the end of the 30 days of a membership? Oh, if you're enjoying it, you don't need to do anything. It will automatically renew at $97 a month. But if for whatever reason you'd rather not continue, just give us a call and we'll put a stop to it. We always say it's the world's easiest cancellation policy. Um, Phil was asking, what happens with trading in the late part of the summer? Is it busy? How is it for options? You know what, it, it, it's usually fairly quiet. Now, we've seen some uh, an increase in volatility recently, which has helped out this summer, but typically in August, it, it, it's fairly quiet. But it's a great time for those delta neutral strategies that I, I, I show you in this class as well. So what you're getting here are several different ways um, to not only make, <coughs> excuse me, make money with options, but to protect yourself, especially with these repair strategies. Anyone of you who have followed me before know I am extremely conservative. Everything I do is risk averse, and um, um, uh, when it comes to trading options, I'm no different. Uh, the strategies I employ are very, very uh, uh, conservative. And I remember that class uh, that we did, I think it was in uh, May, the, the one that went three and a half hours. You know, we had, right. we had slated uh, that class, or we had expected that class to only go about two hours or so, but there were so many questions, there's so much inter interaction uh, with the members. And when you get this class, you're gonna, really going to see it's not just the topics that are mentioned there about uh, creating a steady income, butterflies, etc. It's three and a half hours of a to Z kind of uh, options education, would you agree? I, I would, and this is why we included the other bonus uh, here of the recording we did in July. So the, the uh, original on-demand recording you're going to get, as Rule said, is over three and a half hours in length, uh, but it was slated for two hours, okay? So my promise to you at these classes is that I will stay as long as I need to answer all your questions. That's what I did at that session. And as more questions come up, we cover more material. So it's uh, just a, uh, a ton of material in that class. And the one on the 17th, if I'm not mistaken, was over two and a half. So um, that's why we're sending you both. Um, you know, what I taught you today is is a, just a fraction of what you can do with options. I mean, we have a very small amount of time together, but over those roughly six hours or so of those two recordings, um, you're just going to get a ton of, of information on the way we like to trade off. I uh, the uh, form of the, the details. Eddie was asking if you can again a little bit. This, sure, yes. Now, there's another bonus that I don't know if you mentioned mentioned that we have a loan class at some point in the fall, and if you do order the class today, you certainly will get it as well. For reminding me, yes, absolutely. For any of our members who buy a or recording says this, whenever we have uh, another class, you're welcome to attend as many times as you like for free. Michael's, Michael asked. Uh, Access the links, or will we always have access to the recordings? Is another question that comes up. Yes, you will. 
recording connect wherever you have an internet connection and, and it's yours uh, forever. Um, I've got a question about symbols and stuff. Somebody was mentioning Home Depot. I know you can't do a symbol review right now, but what's on your radio in the first place? Um, there are several, but uh, really right now, now what I really look closely is gold. Um, gold futures are GLD, uh, uh, crude oil, and the yen. Uh, and of course, we in the CAD there uh, for quite some time. If you haven't seen it, uh, uh, that trade alone is worth uh, uh, the membership. It's on a, on a longer time frame. And it has triggered a week or so and has been working on really well, but there's a long way to go in that move on the USD CAD pair. I want to say thanks to James Guillermo, David James again, uh, Valen, Robert, Claire, Allison, Al, Michael, Toter, all for signing up for the options class. Thank you so much for that. We do appreciate your business. We do appreciate you being with us. Uh, Vince, I know we talk a lot about leaps for long term strategies. Leah was asking, is there going to be any discussion of that? And, the on-demand class. Um, yes, I, I believe there is a bit as well, uh, but we're also going to be getting into a lot more of that um, uh, for our members uh, in the coming weeks. So with your 30-day membership and our nightly videos, uh, et cetera, uh, there's a lot more information to come on that. Yeah. Probably the last question I'll get to ask. Paul is asking, what's exa what, what is a protective put strategy? Uh, protective put strategy is when you actually buy the stock, uh, but you protect your downside with a put. So rather than having a stop loss, for example, you're buying that put and it gives you the right to sh sell your shares at that specific strike between the day you buy it and expiration. Uh, it, there, and there's um, a, a great uh, twist to that that I go through in the class as well. I show you a, a different way of selecting that put strike that will not only minimize your risk uh, even further, but uh, I'll show you how to um, actually roll that up and use it as a trailing stop and lock in gains as you go. Uh, you probably can't see it with the limited resources that you have there, Vince, but the link is in the chat, tradingwinds.com slash crush. If you don't want to type it into your uh, browser, you can just click the link and it'll take you right to the order form. Hope you can uh, take advantage of this class. It's forty-seven dollars. You get not only one recording, but two, and you get an invitation to the live class in the fall. You get thirty days of our membership. It's probably worth thousands of uh, thousands of dollars of value. Would you? I know you're biased, but I'm going to yeah, agree. No. Would you? <laughs> yeah. I mean, the amount of information we cover. You know, we're not we're not doing this for forty-seven dollars. Like I said. Um, uh, we're very proud of what we do here at Trading Wins, and we want to give you a chance to experience it and become uh, part of our team. So uh, I hope uh, I hope you'll uh, you'll join us, and uh, I look forward to uh, spending the next 30 days with you. Okay, 10 seconds. Frederick says, "Can you teach a newbie?" <laughs> Absolutely. You don't have to have experience for this. You're, you're going to find out that by the end of that recording, you'll know a lot more about options than you did when you first started. And the advantage of the recording is you can go back and watch as many times as you like. Repetition is a great way to learn. Vince, nice chatting with you, even if we're thousands of miles apart. Uh, special thanks to Reed and the rest of the crew at Investor Inspiration for having us on. Really, really appreciate it. Last word to you. Absolutely. Thanks again. To everyone for for spending the time with us. Hope you got a lot of value of this, and hope uh, hope uh, to uh, to have you as part of our team. And a, a great, a huge thanks to Reed and everyone else at Investor Inspiration for having me on again. Hope we can do this again in the future. With that, Reed, I'll pass it back to you.